Hello students, I'm here again with yet another very interesting poem of your book, The Ant and the Cricket. It's an Aesop's fable. A fable is a story which has animals as its main characters and convey a moral. Now Aesop was a very uh, famous Greek fabulist and storyteller who wrote stories or who wrote fables and his entire collection of fables is very famously known as Aesop's Fables. Now this particular poem, The Ant and the Cricket, is also one of his collection. The poem has got two main characters in particular, an ant and a cricket. And the poet here has shown contrasting attitudes of these two insects. The ant is supposed to be very hardworking and very uh, meticulously planned for the forthcoming future. And that is why it stores the food when it is winter season and it cannot go out. On the other hand, the cricket is a very lazy insect. It is happy-go-lucky, it, it dances, it sings throughout the summer and the spring season. And it does not actually care about the difficult times. At the end of this poem, uh, when the cricket goes to the ant to ask for shelter and food, the ant refuses to give it. And then the cricket learns the lesson that it should have planned for the winter season. It should have stored up some food for itself and uh, it should have uh, decided such strategies uh, so that it could have faced the difficult times to come. The last line of this poem is very very interesting and has a thought-provoking uh, meaning. It says that some crickets have four legs and some have two. The crickets which have four legs are obviously the insects but the crickets with two legs have been compared to humans. We find some humans as hardworking as ants while some humans as lazy as cricket. So with this very uh, interesting fact, let's begin reading the poem. I'll read out to you first and then I will explain you paragraph by paragraph. Okay, so let's begin reading the ant and the cricket. A silly young cricket accustomed to sing through the warm sunny months of gay summer and spring began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter was come. Not a crumb to be found on the snow-covered ground. Not a flower could he see, not a leaf on a tree. Oh, what will become, says the cricket, of me? At last by starvation and famine made bold, all dripping with wet and all trembling with cold. Away he set off to a miserly ant to see if to come to keep him alive he would grant him shelter for rain and a mouthful of grain. He wished only to borrow, he would repay it tomorrow. If not, he must die of starvation and sorrow. Says the ant to the cricket, I am your servant and friend. But we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. But tell me, dear cricket, did you lay nothing by when the weather was warm? Quoth the cricket, not I. My heart, my heart was so light that I sang day and night. For all nature looked gay. You sang, sir, you say? Go then, says the ant, and dance the winter away. Thus ending, he hastily lifted the wicket and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. Folks call this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs and some have two. Now that we have finished reading the poem, I would like you to listen to the poem again carefully while I'm explaining it and understand the difficult words or the poetic devices as I'm going to explain to you. So let's begin. A silly young cricket 
accustomed to sing through the warm sunny months of gay summer and spring there was a silly cricket a young cricket who is called silly who was accustomed to sing underline the children underline this uh, this phrase accustomed to sing means habitual to singing or used to singing in a habit of singing through the warm sunny months of gay gay underline the word gay it means happiness summer and spring so in these two lines the poet says that there was a an insect cricket who was silly rather silly and he used to sing all the time and whenever it was summer and spring season throughout the season when it was warm and when the months were sunny and happy he kept on singing and dancing away the time began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and the winter was come so when after the summer season and the spring season the winter had arrived the cricket began to complain because all the months of the summer and spring he had just idled it away without storing anything for himself and now that the winter had come he started to complain when he found that at home all his cupboards were empty and there was nothing inside not a crumb to be found on the snow covered ground underline the word crumb crumb is a small piece of food so when he went outside and he saw that the entire ground was covered with snow he could not find a single crumb or a piece of food to eat not a flower could he see not a leaf on a tree now winter is such a season where there are no flowers no leaves on the trees the trees are totally bare and they are completely covered with snow so in such a season the grasshopper could neither find a crumb or to eat nor he could see any flowers or leaves on the trees oh what will become says the cricket of me now the cricket got very worried and he started to wonder oh what will become of me now at last by starvation and famine made bold underline this word starvation starvation means hunger and famine famine means shortage of food at last by starvation and famine made bold all dripping with wet and all trembling with cold now the cricket was completely wet and he was trembling 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 means shivering you may underline this word trembling means shivering now the cricket was hungry and the shortage of food made him to wonder what will become of him and he was completely wet and shivering with cold away he set to a miserly ant to see if to keep him alive he would grant then the cricket remember that he had a friend ant and he thought of going to this particular friend so he set off towards an ant and he wanted to see if to keep himself alive whether the ant would grant grant means give and what all did he plan to ask let's see him shelter from rain and a mouthful of grain he wished only to borrow he would repay it tomorrow if not he must die of starvation and sorrow now the cricket thought that he should go to his friend ant and he will ask for these things what all things would he ask shelter from rain and mouthful of grain means little bit of food he wished only to borrow he would repay it tomorrow the cricket will take everything the shelter as well as food from the ant on one promise and he said that he would definitely repay it tomorrow that he would keep his promise and repay like he would also help ant in terms of shelter and food tomorrow and if not if he doesn't get all this then he must die he will die of starvation and sorrow or unhappiness 
Says the ant to the cricket, I am your servant and friend. But we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. Now the ant was otherwise a very polite insect. And the ant tells cricket that I am your servant. I will serve you. I will help you like a friend. But we ants have one policy and that is neither, neither we borrow nor we lend. Children lend means to give. So lend is an antonym of the word borrow. But tell me dear cricket, did you lay nothing by? Underline this phrase, lay nothing by. Lay nothing by means to save for future. To save something. So the ant asked uh, the cricket that didn't he save anything for winter? When the weather was warm, quoth the cricket. Quoth, underline the word quoth. Quoth means said. This word quoth is, was generally used in old English uh, stories and writings. So when Ant asked the cricket whether he had saved anything or not when the weather was quite warm and he could work at that time, the cricket replied, not I. The cricket said that he had not saved anything. Why? My heart was so light that I sang day and night. For all nature looked gay. This was the reply which the cricket said. He said that his heart was so light that he kept on singing all day and night because during spring or summer season, the nature looked so happy, so wonderful and he kept appreciating the nature but he did not think about the difficult times that are going to come. You sang, sir, you say. Now this line is spoken by ant. Go then, says the ant, and, the, and dance the winter away. Now the ant said, the ant told uh, cricket, it was very angry and it said to the cricket that since you had danced uh, the winter, uh, you had danced all the summer season and the spring season, you did not even care about storing up anything for yourself. Now in this winter season also, you can go and dance away. So in other words, the ant refused to help the cricket because the ants knew that cricket would never repay, it would never keep its word and even if today it helps its friend cricket, tomorrow the cricket will just forget about it and will be the same, he, it will not change. Thus ending, he hastily lifted the wicket, hastily, underline the word hastily, hastily means quickly, lifted the wicket. Underline the word wicket. The wicket are the wings of the cricket. If you look at the picture, you can see the wings of this insect. They are called as wicket. And out of the door turned the poor little cricket. Now, after it was being uh, disappointed or being declined by the ants, the cricket got very angry. It lifted its wicket, it, its wings and out of the door it went. Folks call this a fable. I told you in the beginning also the word fable means a story which has animals as characters and conveys a moral. Folks call this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Underline the word warrant. Warrant, warrant means promise or give a guarantee. Some crickets have four legs and some have two. Now in these two lines the poet wants to explain that people call this a fable, a story. But it is very true and it is known that there are insects like crickets who have four legs but there are also crickets who have two. Here this phrase some have two is symbolized to the human beings. This poem is uh, adapted from Aesop's Fables 
and as you can see at the end of the poem you have glossary which you can refer to and can also learn these word meanings and use them in your own sentences. Well, I hope you like the poem children and I hope you agree that we should not be like cricket but we should be like ants who will decide who can plan for the difficult times. You are allowed to be happy right now. You are allowed to be free right now in the present moment but you must not forget to plan for the future also. With this moral, with this note, I rest my video today and in my next video we will discuss the question answers based on the poem. Thank you children.